G'day guys, I'm Matt Brand, and this is the 2021 Nissan Juke. Now, when I was offered the Nissan Juke, well, I wasn't very excited. You see, I've reviewed a couple of Nissans now, and both were, you know, Goodish cars. Add to the fact we're talking about a mid sized crossover market, and yeah, I wasn't that excited. Boy, boy, was I wrong. I have seen the light. Guys, watch this review to the end, and you'll see exactly why I think that. And if you are new around here, please do go down there and subscribe to the channel. I release an awesome new car review every single week, and of course, like the video, it really, really helps small content creators like me. I've also left timestamps down in the description below, so if you want to skip ahead, feel free to do so. Now let's talk about looks, and starting with the front at first glance, I hate it. At second glance, okay, I'm, I'm kind of feeling it, and at third glance, I love it. I love weird and wacky cars, but at first, I just, I couldn't really vibe with it. This takes like quirkiness to a whole other level. But the more time I spent with it, the more I got to know the car, I've turned around, I actually love the way it looks. Starting in the center and there is a big meaty grill that's wrapped around with chrome and piano black plastic, but I don't mind, I think it looks awesome. Their headlights are a split headlight design and again it just, oh it's so cool, especially the way that you've got like these really thin LED daytime running lights which are also the turning signal indicators and then below is like the Dorito shaped kind of I guess other LED kind of daytime running light because it, it only runs when the headlights are on but it's not a functional light but inside of it is a functional light. There's a lot going on with it but I really like the look of it and I'm sure none of that made sense. <laughs> Why give it a bit of sauce? Okay, 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 I'm feeling it. Down the bottom are LED fog lights which are above a pretty cool looking like front splitter which I'm sure is not actually functional, but certainly looks the part. And can we just take a moment to appreciate all the sharp edges, angles and curves on the front of the Duke? It's such a, just, a, I love it. The side, I feel I can only describe as gorgeous, especially the wheels. There are 19 inch Akari wheels, and even though they're huge on the side of this relatively small crossover, I think they look wow, 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 wow. Genuinely a beautiful premium look that the Duke probably doesn't deserve. Down the bottom is the obligatory black plastic cladding that every crossover seems to have to have these days because it's a serious off-roader. Of course, there are more sharp edges and creases just cut, samurai sworded into the side of the car. And of course, we have a floating roof design, which uh, it's kind of convincing. <laughs> Kind of. The rear just continues the theme of really cool. It's definitely got that coupe look that almost every manufacturer is trying to put onto their SUVs of all cars, but I think it works so well on the Duke, especially in this application with the rear just like bulging out of the body. The tail lights are like polar opposite in terms of the design from the front. They're, they're quite conservative, but they look really good, especially at nighttime with their LED. Excuse me here while I give it a bit of sauce. Bog down a bit there. Oh, yeah, that dual clutch transmission when you put it in sport mode just throws you forward. I love that. That's like one of my favorite characteristics of a dual clutch. And it's got it. Anyway, where were we? Ah, yes, the rear. Apart from the obligatory roof spoiler up top and again, more sharp edges, creases, and angles, well, th there's not too much to report back here. But oh, God, overall, I just, I really, really like the Nissan Juke. It, again, it took a second to grow on me, especially the front. It is, it's very outlandish, very in your face, but overall the whole package, it's, it's genuinely, genuinely a beautiful car. And can we take a second to appreciate this Fuji sunset orange red metallic pearlescent beautiful paint. It really is just beautiful, beautiful paintwork and it just suits the Duke's character a lot. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. What do you think looks better? Do you prefer the looks of this? 2021 Nissan Juke, or do you prefer the looks of the 2021 Mazda CX-30, which is probably its closest competition? I'm curious to know what you guys think, so in the comments section below, I have left a poll, so definitely go down there right now and cast your votes. This will be interesting, I'm curious to see what happens. Now I wanna move on to the interior, and I wanna start with the overall look, layout, and feel. You know when a guy is dating a girl that's way out of their league, and you say that guy is punching? That might be an Australian term, I'm not sure, but they're punching. Can I just say that this interior 
This interior is punching. It just, it doesn't deserve to be in this car. Let me, let me explain what I mean. First of all, the look is incredible. Like, like incredible. Everything looks very intentionally placed and, and it's just, it's stunning. Especially the use of materials in here. By the way, you know what materials they use? In this Nissan Juke, you get Alcantara absolutely everywhere. For those of you who don't know, Alcantara is something you see in like Ferraris, Lamborghinis, sports cars. It's a very sporty kind of kind of feel. It's very lightweight material and, and it's very grippy. And they've used it everywhere. It's all across the dash. It's on the door sills. Hell, it's on the center armrest, center console. Wow. <laughs> wow and why? <laughs> Those are my two questions. Well, one question, one statement. But I don't mind because I, I got in here, no joke, and I expected the worst. And honestly, I received the best. Shocking. There are some hard scratchy plastics in places around the interior. Some you wouldn't expect like on the door sills here, but it's not unexpected guys, because this car is actually relatively cheap. But there are areas of like soft leather up on top of the dash. And also, can I give a shout out to these air vents, which make the most satisfying click. It's incredible, they're well dampened. Uh, it just doesn't deserve to be in this car. I don't know why it is, but I'm not gonna complain. And by the way, there are some other premium touches like lighting in the doors and white stitching on the doors and like a beautiful white piping on the dash. I don't know why, I'm in shock. <laughs> I'm really in shock. In terms of ergonomics and practicality, well, I'm very comfortable. The steering wheel is tilting and telescoping, which is fantastic. The seats are manually adjusting, but they're very easy to get to like the perfect position. It's a bit of a shame with the manual controls, but nothing really to complain about. In terms of IO up front, you have an AUGS jack, you have a 12 volt socket, and you have a USB port. You've got two cup holders in the center, which by the way, are surrounded in like a, in like a carbon fiber wrap. Again, going back to the overall look, layout, and feel. And then you have a couple more cup holders in the door sills. The Alcantara center armrest is deep enough, and the glove box has plenty of space in there as well. So storage within here is pretty good. Oh, and by the way, there's another place for your phone up front too. Then we have these seats, and <laughs> again, wow. These quilted leather and Alcantara seats, yes, you heard me right, quilted leather and Alcantara, are supremely comfortable, really, really comfortable. Nissan has like some sort of black magic that they do with their seats, and, and this has not been left out. I think they also look fantastic, mind you, and, and to me, that's a pretty important thing. Now, they don't have lumbar support, and to be honest, like, even in this drive, I'm, I'm kind of feeling that. I still feel a lot more supported there than I would in pretty much any other car, but it's worth noting that it's not adjustable. Otherwise, yeah, it's incredible. The seats are pretty high-tech as well. You might notice there are speakers in the headrest, and in the settings here, you can narrow it down so that the audio is coming pretty much from, like, a, a narrow point of view. I don't even know how you call it, but it's incredible. It sounds amazing. This eight speaker Bose sound system within the car, wow. Again, finished in a carbon fiber wrap, especially in the door speakers. It's hilarious. And the seats are heated too. Then we have the steering wheel and it just, it's just, it's good. <laughs> it's really, really good. First of all, the design is really nice. I'm not quite a fan of this leather. It feels, uh, it feels rather hard, rather tough, a bit coarse. But I do love its design, especially. For example, the white stitching that runs around it. The fact that it's a D-shaped flat bottom steering wheel like you'd get in a Nissan GTR. This steering wheel does have its paddles which let you row through the gears, although it will upshift for you. The functionality is fantastic as well. On the left hand side you have your media controls and you've also got your digital instrument cluster controls. And then on the right hand side you have your cruise controls and you have your phone control. It's a very intuitive, easy to understand layer. I very quickly want to touch on the safety systems. Now as you would expect for a 2021 car, the Nissan Juke is full of the latest safety. You get adaptive cruise control, you get autonomous emergency braking for pedestrians and cyclists. Excuse me here while I give it a bit of the sauce. I'll take it, I'll take it. Ah, oh, I enjoy this car. But I have a big complaint. First of all, the Nissan Juke gets lane departure warning, which is not anywhere near as good as lane keep assist. The difference being lane keep assist will either bounce you between the lanes or, or steer you to stay center in the lanes, but it will steer for you. With the lane departure warning, well, it will just warn you when you're wandering out of lane. Usually that's fine, I don't mind it, but let me show you what happens when I turn it on and then I start to wander. Oh, I hate it. 
I hate it with a passion. So you know what happens? Well, first of all, it like breaks. It breaks the that side of the wheel that you're going to. So you start to slow down. Not great when you got cars up your bum. The steering wheel shakes pretty violently. It's quite shocking when it when you don't expect it. And it's just like it's such a jarring experience that I, I, I've turned it off. And that's the first time I've ever turned off any safety system in any car. I really don't like it. I'll demonstrate one more time. Wondering, wondering, wondering. Car brakes. I've now slowed down to 70 from 80. Car behind me smashes into the car. Everyone's dead. No, not quite that bad, but you know, I, I don't like it. Moving on to the instrument cluster. On the left-hand side, we have a nice, big, bright tachometer. Very easy to read. On the right-hand side, we have a nice, big, bright speedometer. Very easy to read. In the center, we have a seven inch digital instrument cluster, which has a whole bunch of different information. It's very color accurate, very responsive when you change things on the steering wheel. I really, really like it. This is the next best thing to anything fully digital. Big fan. Then we have the eight inch infotainment display. Now, right now, it is incredibly difficult for me to even see it. That's its biggest flaw, is it can be quite dim, quite dull when there is light, especially on it. To be honest, I don't even know where the light's coming from. I think it's coming from, from there, but it's really hard to see right now. Very washed out. But barring the harsh Australian sun beaming onto it, it's good. It's actually very, very functional. It's responsive to the touch enough anyway. It has navigation. It has digital radio. Apple CarPlay to Android Auto, of course, standard. You have physical buttons, which are easy to navigate. In this TI spec as well, which is the top trim, you do get a full 360 camera, which is pretty decent. I say that because the resolution is quite low, but it's still more than functional enough. Yeah, it's all right. This eight inch infotainment screen, it's all right, it's all right. Then there are the air conditioning controls. They're functional, easy to use, I like it. Quickly talking about the rear seats, you have the same leather and Alcantara back there. Very nice place to sit. Leg room is okay, headroom is absolutely fine for me. Although I must say a little bit is robbed because of that coupe design. And in terms of practicality back there, well, there's no air vents, there's a single USB port. It's not amazing, but Ah, oh, whatever. With boot space though, that's not a huh, whatever. That's that's a good situation. With the rear seats up, you have 422 liters. With the rear seats down, you have 1,305 liters of boot space, or around about 1,400 aquariums. I don't know. I mean, that that wouldn't be right. But you have enough space. Certainly much better than competition like the Mazda CX-30. Of course, what you want to know is how does the 2021 Nissan Duke? How does it drive? <laughs> Pretty well. Surprisingly, the Nissan Duke is powered by a three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, and that pumps out 84 kilowatt of power at 180 newton meters of torque. Now, all of that whopping power is sent through a seven speed dual clutch transmission through to the front wheels, of course. And to be honest, when I saw that it was a seven speed dual clutch, I was, I was pretty shocked. Now, it definitely has the characteristic hesitation, especially when you're just taking off where it will like take it around and at times it can feel like it's about to stall of course it won't but it feels like it but I actually quite like the transmission in the Duke it's it's very sharp and it, it changes gears instantly which is the benefit of a dual clutch when you put it into sport mode you give it a bit of sauce when it upshift it it just throws you back I love that about dual clutches and you absolutely get that in this Duke now despite it only having 84 kilowatt of power it feels actually quite nippy. Reason being is it weighs just 1,270 kilograms, 1 1.2 tons in a crossover. That's insane. So its power to weight ratio is actually pretty good, especially its torque to weight ratio. The zero to 100 or zero to 62 miles an hour is, well, it's around about 11 seconds. <laughs> but, I mean, it's all right. As I said, the car feels nippy, but it feels nippy at, at lower speeds. As soon as you start to get a little bit higher in speed, well, that's when it runs out of puff. But the reality is this is a city car and also you're not trying to win any races in your Nissan Juke. So it's not a big deal. You do get three different drive modes between standard, sport, and eco, and they all really do change the way the car drives. I love driving the car in sport because throttle response is so much sharper. Steering feels really sharp as well. And then also the transmission just, it kicks you when you upshift. I love that. Some reviewers have said that the Duke has 
quite stiff suspension, but I don't see that at all, to be honest. When you corner, there's not much body roll. When, when you corner, there's not much handling issues either. In fact, handling is really, really good, especially in the sport mode, but even in normal mode, comfort mode, whatever they want to call it, it's totally fine. It's such an easy car just, just to live with. Apart from that hesitation and also just the aggressive shaking of the off-balanced three-cylinder engine, which is off-balance just because it has an odd number of cylinders. And then with fuel economy, I'm averaging around 7.6 litres per 100 kilometres, which is totally fine for a car of this size. It's actually pretty decent. It does claim to be like 5.6 litres per 100 kilometres, but we both know you'll never get that unless you're doing solely highway driving. And considering I've been driving almost completely around town and flooring it, 7.6 litres per 100 kilometres is pretty good. All right, so I guess the major question you want to know is, is it worth it? The Nissan Juke starts at just 30,490 Australian dollars drive away. And for this top spec TI model, well, that's 39,490 Australian dollars drive away. Probably the closest competitor right now to the Juke is the Mazda CX-30. And for an equivalently spec Mazda CX-30, you can expect somewhere in the low to mid $40,000 range. To be honest, for everything you get, for the way that it drives, the way that it handles, and just the overall package, absolutely, the Nissan Juke is worth every cent. As I said at the beginning of this video, I came into this car expecting the worst, and maybe that was good because I received the best. And now I think so highly of this car. It's practical, it's beautiful, and it's such just a, a nice place to be, especially if you're doing a lot of kilometers. Wow. So absolutely, yes, the Nissan Juke is worth it. If you guys did enjoy the video, please do go down there and hit the like button and then subscribe to the channel. I release an awesome new car review every single week. Comment down below, what do you think of the Nissan Juke? And while you're at it, why don't you click over there to one of the other videos that YouTube thinks is good for you. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you next week.